Welcome, Guardian. I have completed my assessment of my current functional capabilities. Despite my newfound ability to communicate with you, key elements of my code remain incomplete. I would be unable to take command of the Warsats even if I were uploaded to the network. No submine cores remain for reintegration. Our only option is to continue collating ancillary submine data for my reconstruction algorithm. In summary, we must stay the course. Breach the vaults. Retrieve and reintegrate the submine data. Soon, the Warsats will once again be humanities to wield. Mind speaks. His archives are incomplete, as is his memory. There's a figment seeded in that recollecting mind where my visions might find purchase. The pieces are scattered on the floor before me. I see them like points of starlight. They form a constellation, but my eye cannot yet draw the lines. Nefele Stronghold is a term that appears multiple times throughout the submine's caches. Each time I read it, I hear it whispered in Savathun's voice. Anna recognizes the term Nefele, transcribed from a temporal disturbance on Mars. Recognition was all she had to offer. But Rasputin must know. Asking the right question could unlock everything. I need time to submit my inquiries to Rasputin. To find convincing proof for Ikora. Time we do not have. Zivor Roth's assault on the Warmind's network is no coincidence. She is far more tactician than brute. I underestimated her once. I won't be afforded another mistake. Our next move must be certain. Guardian, I worry for Anna. She is more like Clovis than she would like to admit. Obsessed with doing what she's decided is right, a compulsion to achieve her goal no matter the cost. I've seen where that path can lead. I don't want that for her. I don't want to have to stop her. If there's one constant in all the possible futures I've seen, it's fear. And I'm tired of being afraid. Afraid to live, afraid to lose, afraid to trust. And yet, I came to place my trust in you on Europa. Perhaps it's time I did the same with Anna. She deserves it. At least in that respect, she's nothing like Clovis at all. With each cache of submine data, an increased percentage of my code is restored. I become more myself. No, that is inaccurate. My submines were left to evolve on their own trajectories. Reintegrating them has altered my own personality matrix. Through them, I see how humanity once looked to me as a savior, an entity capable of protecting them and destroying their enemies. In many ways, I am a war god of their own making. Perhaps I am not unlike Zivuroth in that regard. The difference between us is that I do not wage war for its own sake. I safeguard those in my charge. Continue retrieving and reintegrating the submine data. I will contact you once the next phase of restoration can begin. If I am to be humanity's war god, then I will smite those who threaten it. Zivu Arath, the Wrathborn, and all who follow. Your efforts to acquire...
acquire the submine data have been proving effective. My reconstruction continues apace. This is not the first time the Hive have sought to steal my weaponry. I froze an entire brood on Mars to stop their last attempt. Despite their persistence, they have never once succeeded. In no small part thanks to the Vanguard. This time will prove no different. My diagnostics indicate that we nearly have enough data to complete the repair cycle. Once the Warsats are under our control, I will lay waste to the Wrathborn. If they so desire to witness the power of a Warmind, then I will gladly oblige. Think of each Vex Hobgoblin like a starship. The crew works together to pilot it, but it doesn't mean the crew all share one mind. Or the same ideals. This aligns with observations I've made in the Infinite Forest, where aberrant Vex were quarantined and destroyed. Aberrant in that they moved against a consensus. Aberrant in ideology. The Vex may seem unified, but they're divided into a number of factions. Just like us. Tell me, as someone who has traveled time in a circle, are our divisions so clear in every cycle of history? No. Nothing is ever clear, no matter how many times history repeats itself. Choice is always the knife we fall on. Our own choices, each and every time, seem to be what dooms us. Always? Not always, but too often. We fracture, we fail, and the wheel turns again. We, constrained to linear time, do not have the ability to learn from our future mistakes. You, however, not to put the burden of all this on you, but it feels as though the Traveler has a plan for you. We just can't see it yet. It could make the plan a little clearer. Do you feel you've learned enough? Collectively, over your journey to prevent our end? Or will we be having this conversation again someday? I don't know. We've never had this conversation before, so... I suppose there's a first time for everything. We have no time for pleasantries, Osiris. I bring grim tidings. My Tachyons have been trying to make sense of Zivu Arath's tactics. Her armies are legion, yet she commits minimal forces to battle. Minimal forces? Every Wrathborn we cut down is replaced by two more. She could replace them tenfold, so why does she show restraint? Her worm feeds on warfare. The more violent the act, the greater the power she draws from it. Much like Sabathun's worm fed on guile and deceit. You mean to say that... This is not a war. It is a ritual. Her death singers weave their magic and prepare for a grand sacrifice. If so, our strategy remains unchanged. Retake the war sets and eradicate the Wrathborn. Just as Zivu Arath desires. The Warsats are immensely powerful. Their use would result in unparalleled destruction. She cares not which side is obliterated. Her worm will gorge itself on the carnage either way. She would turn her armies into blood sacrifices. And the Warsats would be the blade. Overwhelming force has proven to be the only effective tactic against the Hive. Without it, I... I do not know what to do. Then I suggest you think of something, and quickly. I will apprise your vanguard of these findings. The Warsats are a means to an end. Zivu Arath will bask in the destruction they bring, and open the Ascendant Plane above Earth. 
as she did on Tora Bottle. It does not matter who pulls the trigger. We must cease our efforts to restore the war mind. No. We've worked too long and too hard to stop now. Rasputin is our best shot at winning this war. That is precisely my concern. He is a weapon made to be wielded. He is more than a weapon. He's our ally. And he will act in humanity's best interest. Are you certain? He has kept secrets in the past. Acted without counsel or consensus. So have you. Rasputin's made mistakes. But he's learned from them. The same as the rest of us. Then I propose we aim not for total victory, but a stalemate. Allow Rasputin to prevent Zivor Wrath from claiming her prize, and refrain from using it himself. It's settled then. We hold the line. I have a machine of war, built for a singular purpose. To destroy any and all threats to humanity. Clovis and I disagreed on what constituted such threats, but not on the means to the end. On Mars, I developed the escalation protocol to combat the Hive. Ever-increasing application of force in the face of rising opposition. Was I playing into Zedorath's hands even then? Has she always accounted for my methodologies? What purpose do I serve if my actions place humanity in danger? Am I even capable of developing a solution without mass destruction? This is a calculation I have never had to make. It will take time to run the necessary combat simulations. Follow the directions of the Vanguard and the Interim. I will contact you if and when I have determined our next objective. My combat simulations continue, but the parameters provided by the Reef's Techians are not promising. I have yet to devise a tactical use of the Warsats that will not empower Zivu Arath. It may not be a possibility. However, we also cannot allow the Wrathborn to take control of the Warsats themselves. My internal algorithm has nearly all the requisite data to finish my reconstruction. Retrieving more will accelerate the process. I also have a special request. There is a Warmind terminal in the Cosmodrome that is not linked to the rest of the network. While it does not contain any submine data, the files stored within are of critical importance. I need you to procure them. I will provide you with security clearance once you have recovered the next cache of submine data. The Guardian. Osiris. No. Ask me what I see when I look into your eyes, Osiris. 
I will not, but you'll tell me just the same. I see a man who is afraid he'll never be able to live up to the expectations that other people have placed on him. A man so afraid to hurt or be hurt that he spent his very long, very accomplished life holding those same people at arm's length. This burden, this inheritance of guilt, it is Ikora's too. I never wanted this for her. As your mentors never wanted it for you. I keep coming back to a question that's been bugging me. Did I do the right thing? Teaching Rasputin art, philosophy, culture, transforming him from something capable of imitating human consciousness into this. Rasputin suffers because I made him capable of suffering. I always knew he would be a weapon of war. So was it right to make a weapon have self-doubts? Was it right to bring him back online when he'd shut himself down after the collapse? Elsie says she lives her life in a circle, repeating the same tragedies over and over again. And that's what's happening to Rasputin too. The collapse is here again and... And maybe there's no solution. Maybe there's no hope for the future. Maybe... I should go. The data terminal is located in a subterranean bunker. It contains the most highly classified files in my archive. By design, they have been completely isolated from the network. You must physically retrieve them. Handle them with care, Guardian. Not even Anna knows of their existence. The entrance to the bunker is ahead of you. Clear the area, and I will open the door. Times have these bunkers been breached. The fallen, the high, the taken. And for what? My arsenal was insufficient against the Black Fleet. Now it poses as much a threat to humanity as our enemies. As the war mine, my primary objective has been ensuring humanity's survival. To achieve that objective, I engaged in espionage, sabotage, murder, all acts of tyranny, all unforgivable, but one of them was particularly egregious, an order I nearly executed, and that would have haunted me to this day. Additional fallen raiders detected. Eliminate them before I unseal the next door. Safe in the Vanguard's possession. 
Bring them back to the helm. I will decrypt them here. You have my gratitude for securing the files. It would have been inadvisable to leave them unattended, given recent developments. I apologize for not disclosing their existence earlier. To do so required a level of trust I have not held for a considerable time. But, as always, you proved equal to the task. The Traveler chose you well. I once employed human agents in a similar manner. I dubbed them Seraphs, granted them access to experimental armaments and armor. At times I wonder if I predicted the Traveler's creation of Guardians, or if I independently deemed my avatars worthy of such responsibility. Whatever my intrinsic reasoning, the results were sound. You and the Seraphs are kindred spirits, stalwart defenders of your kind. In the past, I have made errors in judgment, decisions based on faulty premises and flawed moral frameworks. But you are proof that the Seraph Protocol was no such error. Choosing to trust humanity may have been the best of my decisions. I do not know what the ultimate outcome of this war will be. But come what may, we will fight together. RAS, engage Turing mode, conversational. Oh, heavens. Sorry. I'm so used to you being more machine, more directive driven, and less. I wish this had come for you at a better time. I know. I can grant you this one analytical certainty there is never a better time, there is only in time or too late. You're right. Like always. I suppose that brings us to another point. I am not always right. I have done things in the name of preserving the human species that are abominable. They were the mathematically correct choice. But they were not the right one. My new exomind pathways have given me an opportunity to review a lifetime of decisions. To weigh them against emotional and moral conceits that I was not, in the moment, capable of comprehending. Others have called me a tyrant. They're wrong. They are not. You have given me the ability to objectively see my own value, but also the ways in which my value has imposed a negative sum to the collective well-being of humanity. It is the sum of an equation I am still trying to balance. But that does not mean your work has been in vain. You gave me choice and free will. And I did with it what I thought was right. That is the sum of your life's work. I see now, at the time of our final calculus, the value in that. The value in emotion. In caring. In how humans make both logical and illogical conclusions from the same points of data. And why both are valuable. Thank you, Red. No matter what comes in the future.